Jimmy Kimmel is taking the entire summer off to really? spend more time with his family. Okay. The late night host made the announcement on Thursday on Jimmy Kimmel Live. The show is going on a two week hiatus and that starts Monday. And then a series of guest hosts will fill in for Jimmy Kimmel. He's been continuing his show, but from home during the pandemic. And now he says he wants to spend even more time with his family. Kimmel's done over 3,000 shows in almost 18 years of the show. Really? And he will host. He's uh, slated to host the Emmys this year in September. I did not know he'd been around doing that show for 18 Think years. Think about that. Yeah, it doesn't is seem that, like it's been 18 Can that be true? Yeah, Has I it mean, been 18 I, years? I guess. I mean, you, you or maybe. Read it. Angie, if you say it, it's got to be true. Well, so I, I, I saw 18 you. years? We'll check on that. Okay, well, yeah, but he's been around. I knew he'd been around a while. I didn't know it'd been like almost 20 years, but... I mean, he's like a mainstay. I still now. think Johnny Carson hosts the team. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Is he gone? <laughs> he's long gone. Uh, as far as the, you know, like his other stints, I mean, he's been pretty busy, even with the COVID going on. I mean, right. he, he hosted Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And of course, I mean, that was, that's a cool show. And I guess he did that for a little while. Now I probably, probably don't want to get burned out, you know? And, and it might be a little bit tougher to do these shows that aren't in front of a live studio audience when you've had a live studio audience. Well, yeah, if you're a because comic. Because that, that energy, it's almost like when you're in the theater, having those people out there kind of give you energy Absolutely. when you're on stage. And it's like, and I'm sure that he's kind of missing that energy. He's probably thinking, all right, maybe by the end of summer, I, I take the time off and we'll have an audience And he's back. really a family man too, so, is he? yeah. Okay. Well, today, as we told you earlier, is Juneteenth, and many companies around the country have given employees paid leave. Now, Google's also jumping in to commemorate the 155th anniversary of the end of slavery in the United States. It's a video, Google Doodle. When you go to Google anytime today, you'll see a little triangle on the picture there, and you click on it to start playing the doodle. The video doodle seeks to educate and inform people who may not have previously known of Juneteenth's historical significance. It is a blend of the words June and 19th, and it's the oldest known U.S. celebration to end slavery. And we're going to learn more about that from Jaleesa Slade mm -hmm. today. Fascinating story of how it made its way from Texas, that celebration, right. through the South and then moved up into all of the states. And it's had, it's, it's had an, it, more impact in some generations than others, but it's right. really powerful and potent right now. Absolutely. And yeah. it's something to celebrate. So, yeah. yeah, at the same time, you know, it's like it amazes you back then how long it took word to get around. Well, it took two and a half years for the Emancipation Proclamation words to get there. That's yeah. why this was two and a half years after the official Emancipation Proclamation that this was read in Galveston. Yeah. That's how long it was. So that was the, the final word for everybody. Gotcha. And I'm sure then it didn't just happen overnight. It no. was days no. and days and days. So we'll learn more about that today. Right. The ongoing threat of the coronavirus has caused many people to hesitate a bit about traveling far from home this summer. So Eyewitness News is partnering with our sister stations in Indiana to present helpful travel guides for those who wish to stick a little bit closer to home. The series features some nearby tourist destinations you can visit in a day. So this morning on Daybreak, we showed you the latest edition of the travel series. The journey began in Crawfordsville, which is home to one of the only rotating jails who even knew that was a thing really? left in the world and it's been turning since the 1800s but now of course it only turns for the museum guest which opens today by the way the museum okay so stay tuned right here for more destination indiana uh, segments on eyewitness news and of course you can go to tristatehomepage.com to see more how about the rotating jail uh, i think it's pretty cool i mean i've been to crawfordsville did you and know about the rotating jail? No, and I'll say this, it's not much of a destination. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, Wabash College is there. Why, I, mean, I know, I know. I, mean, I, I like, like Crawfordsville. Crawfordsville. I had a couple of friends who were in Crawfordsville, too. No, I enjoyed Crawfordsville. Did not know, and I lived up there for three years, just up the road in Lafayette. That's about 30 minutes away. Yes. And I forecast for Crawfordsville, but I never remember them talking about the rotating jail. Well, now you have a chance to go. There Maybe you go. they've got a good burger joint in Crawfordsville. Oh, that's a long way to go for a burger. <laughs> I'll just I'll stick to Pike County today. How's that? That's a little closer. Well, there'll be more of Destination Indiana, so keep it tuned right here, and we'll show you some places you can go in a day. We'll be right back after this.